Hey guys, today's video is going to be something I ain't really talked about before in any of my other videos, but this is uh, information on how to replace uh, your sequencers inside your electric furnace. And you can see this is a Coleman Presidential, it's an older model one. It's painted white because we painted it white, I'll show you why. We painted it white and brown because we made this base for it here in the garage. And it's basically just a big space heater all we did with it. And it's not exactly safe, but it is... Uh, efficient because I mean all your heat's coming straight out of it you don't have to worry about losing anything in the ductwork or anything and of course we'll get the filter in the top here it came uh, originally set up like this we used that aluminum tape which is real good stuff and uh, put sheet metal on there and taped it up real good but uh, anyway we decided to quit using it in the garage because it just uses too much electric the same draw 60 amps a couple years ago I had to take them out take the sequencers out that was in this one which were new ones because I had to put them in and I put them in our other furnace so uh, now I'm fixing it up for a buddy of mine and he bought the uh, new sequencer for him and don't pay the high dollar price for these get them off eBay or Amazon something like that you can get them uh, dirt cheap compared to what it uh, cost on a, on a local place unless you absolutely have to have them anyway here's the specs on it and you can see the the model number here 3500 a 16 54,000 BTU and it draws uh, like I said 60 amps on a 220 circuit and uh, it's a real nice furnace but uh, like I said it's just basically too much for the garage here we just use propane heaters now I already got the there's no wires hooked to it because we ain't used it for a while I hooked my welder up instead but uh, you want to first thing you want to do is turn your breaker off then uh, pull this out. This is your main disconnect in the furnace. There are several different designs on these, but these are the U-shaped ones. And when you pull that out, it disconnects all your wiring in here. So if you if you can't get to the breaker or something, just pull that out, and you should be safe. But I recommend change, pulling the shutting the breaker off just to be on the safe side. But uh, this does shut off all your internal wiring. These two wires are for the thermostat. This is 24 volt thermostat. These are uh, 24 volt as well. That's the main thing you got to watch. The, one of these ain't the exact same replacement as what's in it. But it was all I could get because for some reason the other number didn't want to come up. But uh, let me go ahead and take this sheet metal apart. You just got several screws here. You just got to take this side loose to actually wire it up. So we're just going to concentrate over here. Okay, it looks like a mess, but don't paint it because it's actually pretty simple here, really. But on a lot of them, on the inside panel here, it'll have a, a schematic in there. This one don't for some reason. It might have peeled off because you can see this one got some water damage. It sat in the basement for a long time before we got it. But uh, anyway, here's your two sequencers. So this is your small one here. Like I said, the power's off. It's not even hooked up to anything. And this is your bigger one. And right now will be a good time to look at them and make sure all your connections are the same. And some of these will mount different. You can see these are on individual plates, whereas that one's on a plate all by itself. And this is actually out of another furnace, so the numbers are probably even different on it. But uh, these are still working, but uh, for some reason it wasn't kicking the third element in. When one of them, I don't know which one is the third element on this, but uh, it was only drawing 40 amps when the other furnace. I got thinking, well it's got three heating elements in here and it was only drawing 40 amps so there's 20 amps missing because they had the same specs as this one and that's when we realized that the, one of the sequencers wasn't working so we changed that and then we got full heat out of it. I'll talk a little bit about the heating element. I'm going to do a separate video on how to check the heating element but you can see this is uh, one element and you, you can basically see how it is. These are your thermostats in case something catches on fire or something overheats. This will shut off each individual element. And there's really not nothing major going on. Up here's your 24 volt transformer for your thermostat. And your uh, your blower plugs in up here. It could have different speeds on it. Because it does have a jumper down here. You might be able to jumper 
to get the other speeds on it, but uh, as far as I know, it's just a single speed motor. motor. Because the other furnace we got it is, and it's basically the same as this one, it's a Coleman too. But anyway, uh, you see these are your main fuses here, and you get your three elements here. And basically these are just switches that uh, hook in series with the element, the way something heats up, it'll shut one of them off at a time. Don't make the mistake that a lot of people do, don't just start ripping the wires out and try to hook them up. Change one wire at a time, just like you're changing plug wires on a vehicle. That way you won't get nothing mixed up. I'll try to show a little bit of what I'm talking about. I'll put the camera on the tripod here. But uh, take a picture first, and while I'm talking, I'll put in a few pictures that might show the wiring a little bit better for you. That way you can see what's going on better, because they're all going to be different. Some furnaces will have three of these, but it, they all change out the same, basically. But uh, just pay attention to that and uh, make sure that uh, you take a picture first. Unless you uh, have a schematic to go by. But I find a picture is easier because you can actually see everything. And you got to pay attention to these brown and white wires on the top. That's what uh, controls the... Uh, uh, that's what kicks these on and off. See, this is your ground on the bottom here. Hooks on the bottom terminal. Just a jumper here and all that is is a ground. And this blue wire should be what kicks the uh, blower on and off. That should be what that's for. The first thing I like to do is just take the plate out. You know, it gives you a little more flexibility and everything. Where you can get a little more play out of the wire so you can actually get in there. And like I said, don't just start ripping the wires out. And you want to make sure it's oriented in the same way as your writing's on here. Because... Uh, that's really all that matters because they'll mount the same in here. Then you just want to take one wire at a time. I mean, if you took a picture of it and you feel confident, you can take everything loose, but I just find it much easier to do it like this. That way, there's no chance of getting anything mixed up. You'll see that's one, you'll run into a few differences, like this one's straight, and this one's sideways on that, but it don't really matter. Your brown will hook in up here. Your black. black jumper and this just connects your neutral to the next one all that does so this one's already changed that's all it's all it's connected to that one and the rest of it hooks into the other one the other one's got more wires than this one does so if you don't have any problems it's going to be on the, this one here but uh, it's about to, it's very similar to be honest about it and again, you just want to orient it the same direction. Some of them will be labeled. As you can see here, it's got the... Those are just your uh, your switch contacts. And these are basically non-polarized. Because it's just a cool wire in here. So you can hook it up this way or this way. It shouldn't really matter as far as that goes. Because all these are switch contacts. And this is just a uh, cool here, all this is. And these are just switch contacts. So, uh, it shouldn't really matter, but I'm just trying to do it like this one is. And that'll sometimes happen, see? That, that sequence there just fell apart on me. And that's what happened to the ones that originally came out of this. They get so hot, the plastic starts breaking down in them. Then you get springs and everything falling out of it. For some reason you run into a problem with both of them being mounted on the same plate or both of them on individual plates. They're just pop riveted on. You can drill them out and change them over how you want them. Alright guys, I got everything hooked up here and everything's ready to go now. So I'm going to run a temporary wire to it and make sure everything works before we put it in the house. So, okay guys, I got it hooked up for a temporary setup. You see I got a number 10 gauge wire. That's all I had laying around. 
and uh, it'll work just for a couple minutes just to say it will heat up so make sure you use at least a number six gauge wire on this but we'll get ready to fire it up here Go ahead and twist the thermostat wire together flip the breaker we'll see what happens it will work or it'll blow up one of the two on Well, it always pays to double check this wire right here had a bad terminal on there it wasn't even loose it wasn't even wasn't even on there it was broke now let's try it again Check to make sure all three elements are on. And they are. That's working, guys. The wire's not even getting warm. I figured that smaller wire would get warm, but it ain't. Tell you, when you get that set up like that, that puts out some serious heat coming out of there and get all the direct heat out of the furnace. It's basically just one big giant space heater when it's set up like this. That's actually a good setup, really. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it, you know, it's not a something safe, you know, but, but it is something just for an old garage or something, an old shed or something. It is something to consider. And if you don't, if you want to save on power, you can actually unhook one or two elements and still get quite a bit of heat out of it. Make sure it shuts off right. Right now, I just shut the unhook the two thermostat wires, so the element should be kicking off. I think I just heard one kick off. Yeah, right there's one kicked off right there. Yep, there she is. She's working, guys. Well, guys, if you got any questions or comments about sequencers, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. My next video is going to be talking about the heating elements in these, how to check them without having to take anything more apart than what's already apart here. Just check it with the wires here. So, uh, but yeah, if you got any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.